What's up, class? We're going to be doing some fun practical applications today by combining the deep dive I did on the rug glitch and the deep dive I did on the pillar glitch now that those two videos are out of the way. But before I get into that, I just want to let you guys know how happy I am with the comment section in this series. You guys are leaving some fantastic tips and helping each other out and all kinds of amazing things. What I think I'm going to do is at the halfway point of this mini-series, I'm going to post a viewer-generated follow-up tips video. In each of the videos so far, you guys have come up with some great tips that I forgot to mention in previous videos and in some cases didn't even know about. And you're being very friendly about it too. No YouTuber is perfect and sometimes it's hard to remember everything on the fly, you know? So I think it would be a great resource to have in this playlist just a straight up miscellaneous tips video that patch up any holes in my previous videos. So keep those tips coming. Now most of you guys are doing a good job of not advertising for other channels and not jumping the gun on my lessons, you know? Just remember to keep the tips relevant to the current video and don't include any links. All links and certain keywords, like the word channel for example, YouTube automatically filters into the spam section of the comments, which as you probably know, YouTubers very rarely check because it's like out of sight, out of mind, you know? I almost never delete anyone's comments manually because YouTube itself does a really good job of catching the majority of the questionable stuff without me even trying and just filtering it into the spam folder. You guys would be stunned at how sophisticated YouTube's comment algorithm has gotten over the last 10 years. Anyway, just wanted to mention that because the comments that do make it through have just been amazing. We have a really creative community building here and proof of that is with all the creative names you guys came up with for our mascot cat. In fact, there were so many creative names that I just couldn't decide myself. Probably over 20 good ones. So what I did was narrow them down to what I thought were the top five so you guys can vote on the final name up in the iCard above. I would have done the top 10, but YouTube only allows for five choices in that poll feature. So let's see which name prevails the good old democratic way. Okay, on to today's practical applications. Now before we get to combining the rug glitch and the pillar glitch, I wanted to show you guys a really good example of using that scaffolding and conduit combination for my pillar glitch video. Even though it worked in my test before I recorded rebuilding the castle walls, it didn't work so well on camera. I mean, I could have spent a good while trying to make it work, but I already knew that it was going to be a long video and would take a couple extra days to edit. But I wanted to redeem that combo here with a great practical application, and that is inserting doors into pre-built houses. For example, this door right here. That was done the way I'm about to show you. So we're going to head right next door to where Jaws is hanging out and insert a door into that pre-built house. Okay, so let me show you why the conduit pillar combo is going to be ideal for this situation, okay? So I'm going to go into workshop and pull out the concrete pillar. We'll just, you know, use this one as an example. We'll get to using the, uh, oh look, <laughs> did you guys see Jaws? He was just rolling on his back there. Okay, so uh, the concrete pillar here, which, you know, as I mentioned in the notes of the last video, is just called the concrete wall, but we nicknamed the pillar because it looks like a pillar. So, as you can see here, it can sink into the ground, but it's not able to do that on every surface. So if I head up here and I try to sink it into the ground, it doesn't, okay? The only way we can make it sin, it doesn't sink on the inside either, all right? So that's a problem but it does sink back here, okay? So what you can do is create that chassis I was talking about in the last video. I'm gonna set that down, go over to conduits. And I'm gonna use two here just to give us a little extra length. Then I'm gonna sink this down to about right there. And move it a little closer. And now I'm gonna raise this up to about right there. Uh, maybe a little more, actually. I'm gonna sink that down, raise it up. Oh, move it closer. There we go. Okay, and then I'm gonna move this whole chassis so far back. Now, here's the way that you repair doors, okay? 
in order to get a door to fit into that area right there, you need the door without the door frame. All right, so we're going to head over to... We'll just use a wood one. Okay, so we'll use a wood doorway. Right there. Oh, and before I set this down, here's the reason why you have to do it this way. So I'm going to head over to doors. And no matter what door you try to use, you can't set this... Do well, you can set down power doors, but you can't set down the regular hinge doors uh, without a door frame. Okay? No matter what way you angle it. All right, so that's why you need to start off with the door frame. So we're going to head over to the wood again. And we're going to set down this shack wall doorway. Okay, and then we're going to pick out a door. And... Hmm... Should we use the one with the holes in it? I don't know. I'm thinking about green, though, because I think it would match uh, Jaws. So let's just use the one without. All right, so I'm going to use this one right here. And then what I'm going to do is, well, first of all, you want to check and see which way it opens. So this one is opening outwards towards you. Now, a good rule for architecture in general is that you want the doors to have their swing radius be towards a wall, okay? I mean, that's just general, that's not a Fallout 4 thing, that's just a general good architecture thing. And in the majority of the cases, unless it's a screen door, doors open into houses, not out. So the way that we want this door to be oriented, because the stairs are here and the wall is here. We don't want the door to open up and block the stairs. We want the door to swing open this way. All right. So what we got to do from here is rotate this whole thing around. So I'm going to select group, select the whole thing, swing it around like that and set it down. And then, of course, you want to close the door so you can get the best uh, viewing experience as you're trying to orient it in there. Okay, now, once the door is in place, you can store the shack wall and the door will remain. In fact, it'll still even open. All right, it's kind of floating, a floating door. All right, so that is what we're going to use to place into this doorway. And you'll notice that the reason that we have to use the pillar glitch is because we want to be able to raise and lower this door to sink it right into place and at even some point, you know, make adjustments to the top. So I'm now going to move this chassis into place. We're going to grab this whole thing and see if it works. Okay. So let's get right up here like this. Perfect. Okay. And this will be good because uh, this way we don't have to pick up any extra rads from Jaws. Now I could just move his doghouse over here or something. But, you know, this is a great example of just working around the environment here. Okay, so here we go. Let's try this again, actually. I think I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these. I was debating whether to keep them or not. Because they're kind of cool, and once you scrap them, you can't get them back again. But they are kind of getting in the way, and this little front stoop here is being used for our building section. So I'm going to go ahead and scrap them. All right. So now, let's give this another try. There we go. Okay, so part of the problem I'm having here is that uh, it's coming up off the ground. So I'm going to sink it down just a little bit there. Now we should have... Okay, perfect. What am I getting hung up on now? Oh, that thing. Okay. All right, now... We're lucky in this case because we can make adjustments. All right, so I'm going to try to orient this the best that I can. 
But if we don't get it right, then we can just swing back through and just fine tune it a little bit. All right, so let's see how that looks. Actually, that's not too bad. There's a little gap there, so I just need to slide it over to the right a little bit. Over to the left, just a smidge. Just a smidge. So close. Now, once you start building around it, you might not have as many opportunities to make adjustments. So if you want to get it just right, you might as well do it the first time. We got it. Okay. So I'm going to store these things. And let's take a look. Boom. That worked great. Okay, like I said, I haven't really done anything in here. I put a little armor workbench. Oh, that's right. I wanted to mention this real quick. Put the armor workbench in here because you can actually add ballistic weave to these utility coveralls. So I went ahead and added ballistic weave just in case I happen to be in, uh, in costume when we get attacked, you know. I gotta remember to put a door over here too. Anyway, and the other thing is, is some viewers pointed out that uh, you can change the lights of the mining helmets. So if you guys see McCready over here, uh, it's during the day, so his mining light isn't on. But as it gets towards night, you'll see that a purple light will start to uh, shine through. So thanks to the viewer for that tip. I really appreciate it. I think his name was Court Foss. So thanks, Court. All right. So there we go. So that's how you add doors to pre-built houses and why that pillar conduit combination came in really useful in this situation. Okay, moving on to the next item on the list. Now, the next video after this is gonna be my deep dive into the wire glitch. So all your in-depth wiring questions will be answered in that upcoming video. What we're gonna do here for these next two mini builds is use some wiring tricks that don't involve the wiring glitch, but instead the rug glitch and the pillar glitch. And we're gonna start off with the seamless marquee sign that you guys saw at my Vault 42 build. In fact, I'm just going to jaunt over there real quick and show you, and then we'll zip back here and rebuild it here at the schoolhouse. Okay, we are here at Vault 42. Nice sunny day. Now, as you can see, I added a little sign in front of the wire. <laughs> Don't feed the bears. I actually got this from a little place that's only like a minute walk, a little northwest of here, I believe, called Rocky Narrows Park. And you can actually drag these signs back to your settlement. Well, you can drag them anywhere but the closest place to drag would be Vault 42. Oh, and by the way, here's a little tip for you. I'm gonna, I was gonna move them out of the way anyway. When you pick these signs up, you move extremely slowly, all right? But one thing you can do to kind of speed up the process is to hold down the X button after you've picked it up, and then when you release the X button, it'll throw the sign. <laughs> so <laughs> I'll go get it in a second. Yeah, that's a little way to get these things over to your uh, settlement a little faster, or really anything. You know, I did that with the mannequins and stuff like that. So there's a there's an extra little bonus tip for you. Okay, so the purpose of me showing you this was because we have a seamless wire that goes straight into the ground. All right, now for some bizarre reason, Bethesda decided to put these conduits on the you know on the very bottom of the marquee sign. You know. Just at the ugliest place you could put it. You know, they couldn't put it down by the bottom of this post here, you know, or it'd be a little bit out of the way because these signs don't sink. You know, there's no reason why they couldn't have just put it at the bottom of this post. But they had to put it right in the center and it makes it challenging to look good. But if you wire it straight into the ground, it looks decent. You know, it's the best you could do with it pretty much. So what we're going to do now is head back to our schoolhouse in Jamaica Plain and I'm going to show you how to build this sign over there. Okay, we are back at our little schoolhouse. Let's put up a marquee sign, all right? So what we're gonna do, what's that up there? Oh, that's the uh, provisioner. Okay, I was like, are we gonna have a battle? <laughs> okay, yeah, let's break out the marquee sign. Can't remember what DLC or patch that came from, so I'll put a pop-up for that, but it's at the end of the power section. And it's the end of the marquee section of that power section. And here we go. So we can do a little advertising for our class. 
I was thinking about putting it right over here to kind of make use of this junk pile, you know, so that the junk pile isn't so uh, obvious. And it's also a good place to sort of disguise another trick I'm gonna show you in just a second. So we're gonna go ahead and put that there. Yeah. And let's see how that looks. Okay, looks good. Now to power this marquee sign, you need one unit of power. Now this is gonna be a great example to show you this technique because if I wanted to, I could figure out a way to wire the power all the way through here. In fact, I left a little conduit right there if you can see it, just in case I wanted to try to wire it over the roof and down over the side and back over here and do all that stuff. But you know what? Sometimes you just get lazy and you just want to put down another generator and not even worry about wiring something across your entire settlement. So what we're going to do is we're going to build a generator here just for the sole purpose of generating this power sign. All right, lighting it up. So I'm going to go ahead and set this down right here and we're going to wire it up. Bang, now we have a nice lit sign. All right, we'll probably say something like, you know, school zones, no, I don't know. I'll figure out something to put up there in a second for you. Okay, now here's what we're going to do. All right, that looks kind of ugly. We don't want it sitting out in the open like that. I could have put it in this area right here, but instead what we're gonna do is actually hide the generator underground, all right? It's pretty much only use is gonna be to power this side, but that's okay. I don't feel too bad about wasting resources because uh, I've got my supply lines running. You saw that provisioner walking by, you know, if you guys want to, let me know if you want me to make a video about uh, resources and supply lines. But someone asked about that in the last video. That's how I get all the resources over to this uh, settlement area. I just have provisioners running back and forth between my settlements. And that way I can just uh, collect all the junk in one settlement. And the resources are applied to all my other settlements, at least the ones that I've hooked up to those supply lines. Okay, so... How are we gonna hide this generator underground like you saw at the uh, Vault 42 build? Well, we're gonna use the rug glitch and the pillar glitch combined. All right, so let's get out a rug. And in this case, I think I'm gonna go ahead and use this round rug right here. The generator will fit nicely on it. There we go. Okay, now I can uh, slide this rug around as you can see, and it's still gonna remain hooked up. As a matter of fact, this is partially one of the techniques I'm gonna show you in that wiring glitch video that's coming up, is uh, putting things like generators on rugs and then moving them around. But we'll get to that in the next video. That's just one of the many wiring glitch techniques I'm gonna show you. Okay, so let's get this generator underground. And the way we're gonna do that is to head over to structures. And I'm going to pull out my favorite scaffolding piece under framework, yep, this one right here. Perfect. Okay, now here's another tip I forgot to mention that I was gonna show you. Once you bury this generator underground, then there's no way to get it back out again. So you have to be ready to be permanently happy with that. But I did figure out in the testing right before this video, there is another way to do it actually. Like if you ever wanna move this generator or scrap it or do whatever, you don't have to have a generator underground in the sewers of your settlement, you can pull it back out. And the way we're gonna do that is by leaving something just barely sticking up over the ground that we can then group select and pull this thing back out again. Okay, so this will be a fun little extra bonus tip for you. And the way we're gonna do that is head over to the power section. Now you could use something like an iron post, but we wanna use something that's gonna be the least visibly seen. And I discovered that the conduit section, you know, we have these tall conduits here. In fact, this one's even taller. This one can be sunk pretty far down to the ground and still have a little bit at the top that we can grab and yank this whole thing back out again. All right, so I'm gonna set this thing down right here. Right here next to it. And this will also serve as kind of a guide for us. As you can see, I don't have the generator lined up perfectly. Now I do. Once we sink this underground, then I'll be able to uh, use this as a guide so that uh, we don't have to readjust it and have the wire slinking off to the left or the right. 
All right, boom. Now, let's go ahead and uh, get this thing in place. Now remember our scaffolding frame here is acting as our pillar and the rug here is allowing the generator to be moved around freely without disconnecting the power. If I didn't have this generator on the rug, then there'd be some collision detection going on with the wire and we'd get that sort of red outline. So this is gonna allow us to uh, save two birds with one stone, all right? Oh, and by the way, you guys left some great tips in the last video about how to prevent that popping up effect with the group select, and that works great. Basically, what you gotta do is just start off looking up a little higher, and if you're still having problems, you can just select the item that you wanna move, deselect, and that's gonna refocus that onto this point right here. Okay, so I appreciate that tip, guys. All right, so let's give this a whirl. I'm gonna group select this whole bit here and see how we can sink it into the ground now. Just gonna slide that right over to here. Let's see where we can get a, a good bit of blue. Okay, guys, I can see that guide there is working out perfectly. Let's see if we can sink it down just a little bit more. Nope, that's okay. Oh, look at that. That is really good. Now, if I group select it from here, it's gonna select the whole thing, all right? So if I wanted to really be sort of anal about it and try to get that just like, you know, a centimeter more to the right, so it's straight up and down, then what you could do is take this out of the way. And now we've got this little piece here. Oh, did I sink it down too far? No, I didn't, there it is, right there. All right, you see that conduit? Okay, now I can select this conduit and it's not gonna select the sign because uh, the generator was too far underground. And then I could start over again and make these adjustments from right here. See how it's blue? I'm not gonna do that because that's good enough. Now, if you select this marquee sign from here and you try to move it over, you're gonna get that red outline because now it's the, the wire is detecting some collision. By the way, this is another thing I wanted to mention. The reason I didn't say in the last video that the rug glitch only works on non-snappable items is because that's not entirely the case. There are some non-snappable items in your workshop where the rug glitch won't work. This marquee sign is not snappable, but it can't for some reason be used with rugs. I've tried, you know, the largest rugs, I've tried spreads of rugs, and it just doesn't seem to be able to be moved with the rug. And there's several other items that are like this. Like I've had some trouble with some of the vending counters, not all of them, but uh, some of them. And there's a few other examples of non-snappable items that you can't use the rug glitch with. And the other reason I didn't mention is because snappable items can be used with the rug glitch. They just have to be the rug. So as you might've seen in my solution to the rug sinking video, you are able to use snappable items as if they were the rug glitch. So I just wanted to mention that's the reason why I didn't mention that in the last video about the pillar glitch or the rug glitch, because there are exceptions to that rule, all right? And those are two good examples of that. Okay, so here we go. We got our sign. If you look at it from this angle, there you go. It looks nice straight up and down, so that's good enough. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna skip ahead and add some words here so we can make good use of this sign. I'll be back in a second. Okay, I'm back. All right, so we got welcome to the school zone. And then what I think I might do for this section down here is reserve it for Patreons of the school zone. So yeah, you might see some names appear there in upcoming episodes. Okay, let's move on to the next item. That looks really cool, actually. That worked out well. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna slide this over here because we're gonna reuse it in just a second. Okay, so we're gonna do something sort of similar to the marquee sign, but involving some uh, turrets, all right? Now, I don't know about you, but I have this thing where I love uh, building right to the boundaries of a settlement, you know? I mean, I'm not doing it here at Jamaica Plains, but in a lot of my other settlements, I try to build all the way to the edge just to really just take advantage of uh, what's available to me, you know? That's why I haven't built on Spectacle Island yet, because uh, the boundaries are so huge, it's a little overwhelming. But uh, what I thought was kind of interesting about this uh, Jamaica Plain build is that the boundary comes right up along this uh, sidewalk here and then cuts slightly into this bus. 
and I like to, you know, creatively use the environment around me. And I thought to myself, well, what can I do with just a little quarter panel of this bus here? All right. And then, of course, it cuts across and at a weird angle over there. You know, as you can see, I tried to jimmy some of these things in as far as I could out of the boundaries, you know, just to take maximum use of the space. So we're going to do something kind of fun with this quarter panel of the bus here. And we're going to rig up a cool little defense turret display. Plus, it'll be good to defend the front of the building, too. You know, we got the backside defended with that defense niche back there. But we might as well have some defenses in the front so we're not disturbed during the middle of class. OK, and then uh, what we're going to do is we're going to involve the same technique that we involved here, but just add a few other elements. So I'm going to use. This time. A heavy laser turret. Oh, and I can't build anymore because I need screws. Okay. Oh, man. I got screwed. <laughs> Pun intended. Okay, so I'll be back in just a second when I got some screws loose from somewhere. All right, guys, I am back. <laughs> got all screwed up there for a second. So we are resupplied. And what I was telling you was that we are going to build a little defense area with the heavy laser turret right on top of that corner of the bus. So let's go ahead and get out our rug and on top of it we are going to place heavy laser turret okay then we need a generator now if i was being super efficient i probably could have found a way to run a conduit underground over here but you know whatevs <laughs> okay actually to be perfectly honest we don't need the turret on the rug we need the generator on the rug so let's do it that way then wire this thing up okay now we are going to affix this turret up here okay so and then uh, we're going to bury the generator underground all right so let's slide this back a little bit now how to get this uh, laser turret up there okay so we can't just place it as much as i'd like to just right up there so before we try to do the pillar glitch, let's see if we can do the rug glitch with it first. All right. So, you know, whenever you can do the rug glitch, it's always easier. So I'm going to head into the wood section. I'm going to grab some stairs. Uh, these stairs will work. These about right here. All right. Then I'm going to add a little tiny little floor piece. Let me add it to the front. Almost. Let's slide it back just a little bit more. There we go. Now we can hopefully carry this thing up here and just rug glitch it right on top. All right, let's see if that works. All right. And it looks like it's going to work. Okay. Here, let me get this thing a little closer. A little farther. <laughs> and we can get it pretty close, actually, to the edge, but not quite so that it's not sticking out. But we're going to solve that with a clever little gimmick. Just going to keep getting it just a tiny bit closer. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to pull this rug out. Yep, had a feeling it wasn't going to sink. Okay, so that in of itself looks pretty good, but we have a little leg sticking out. So I'm going to do something about that in just a second, because that's bothering me. It would seem like this thing would sort of tip over. Now let's get this generator underground first. And the way we're going to do that is with the pillar glitch 
Okay, so we're gonna try it first without the conduit, but I have a feeling I'm probably gonna have to use the conduit, so let's give it a try. And all right, looks like, well, yeah, there we go. Okay, so now we're just gonna sink this down underground. Come up just a bit. Actually, this is a good place to quick save. Because <laughs> I didn't add one of those uh, little conduits to pull this thing back up again, so. <laughs> Always good to remember to quick save. Okay, that should be good. All right. Excellent. <laughs> yep, you see the wire going right through there. But who's going to go in this bus? You know what I'm saying? Okay, so now what can we do to create something to give it some support? Well, I came up with two possibilities. It's just going to kind of depend on the style that you're looking for. In the Nuka World section, under miscellaneous, I believe back here there is a pole. Nope, it's not there. It's going to be probably in the Nuka Town. Yep, here we go. So we could take the signpost and rug glitch that. Actually, I don't think this thing rug glitches. This is another good example of a non-snappable item that can't be rug glitched. All right, so we would have to pillar glitch this in there and we could uh, create a little support where it's going to look like the turret leg is sitting on top of this signpost. All right. But I think I came up with something a little cooler, and that is to use, no, nope, it's gonna be in the wall decorations, this basketball hoop. So we're going to uh, turn the basketball hoop around and use this to create a gun shield for the laser turret, all right? So not only would that provide support for that leg, but it would also give it some uh, cover and some protection. And whenever you have turrets that have a metal front side to them, that's what they're called. These things are called gun shields, all right? But we can't just place it up there, so we are gonna have to pillar glitch this. So let's head over to somewhere where we can place it on the wall. And I'm gonna place it right here. Okay, and then I'm gonna grab the... Oh, looks like I uh, stored that scaffolding. Okay, so I'm gonna place the scaffolding uh, kind of close to the basketball hoop. I'm gonna group select. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this thing around, okay? I'm gonna move it out to about right here. And that looks good. Okay, so we're gonna slide the scaffolding frame back and add some conduits. Probably only need one in this case. So let's do it like that. Actually, I may have to raise this up just a bit. So let me uh, lower this and then just raise it up just a bit. That should be good, okay? Now, I'm going to lower this down so that we can raise it up after we've group selected it. Group select it, move it closer to the uh, basketball hoop. Okay, so this little chassis rig here should do the trick. Let's give it a try. You know what? I didn't raise the conduit up high enough. So let's do that. Okay, that might be too high, but we'll see what happens. Okay. Oh, so close. So you guys can see the theory is going to work here. 
I could spend, you know, like 10 minutes or 15 minutes or how long it's going to take readjusting it. And that's, you know, one of the things about building is that it does take a lot of patience. All right. But the rewards are worth it because once you get everything perfectly into place, it just looks awesome. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to spend a little time finagling this to get it just right, maybe decorate a little bit, and then I'll cut back in with the final result so you guys can see how sweet this looks. All right. All right. And there we go. Looks good, looks good. Looks like one of those uh, PDF towers from Empire Strikes Back. <laughs> that is cool. I like it, I like it. So that's now gonna guard the front of our classroom there. But primarily it was a great example of using the combination of the pillar glitch and the rug glitch. So I hope these little mini builds helped you guys out or at least spawn some new ideas. Be back in a few days with that wiring glitch video as we continue to build on each previous video in the Blue Square Lessons. In the meantime, hit that like button and the notification bell, and we'll see you back here on the School Zone. Happy building and class dismissed.